Alien princes screamed as plasma bolts whizzed past their trembling frames, the grotesque stench of burnt flesh stinging their nostrils. Bruce Phillips, the last human standing, knew he was their only hope. The grizzled soldier sucked in ragged breaths, back pressed against the scorched husk of a vidion tank. Sweat poured down his dirt-caked face as his eyes scanned the devastation. The once resplendent palace complex lay in ruins, silver spires twisted into unrecognizable heaps. Lush gardens transformed into pockmarked wastelands, littered with the broken bodies of Vidian warriors. Bruce was alone, the sole survivor of an elite commando squad tasked with the impossible, rescuing King Korvac's twin sons from a rebel stronghold. They'd fought like demons, carving a path to the princes, but the enemy had numbers on their side. In a final desperate act, Bruce's brothers-in-arms sacrificed everything to buy him a chance, a chance to save the princes and complete the mission. But now pinned down, outnumbered and outgunned, Bruce faces impossible odds. The princes are the key to a peaceful succession, to stopping the rebel scum from drowning the Empire in the blood of civil war. If Bruce fails, if the princes die, the fires of conflict will consume the Quadrant. As rebel soldiers close in, hungry for blood, Bruce checks his rifle and grits his teeth. He'll succeed or he'll die trying. The fate of billions hangs in the balance, and he'll be damned if he lets his teammates' sacrifice be in vain. It's do or die time, and this lone human soldier is ready to show these alien bastards what he's made of. Bruce's mind went into overdrive, with the artillery shell's concussive blast still ringing in his ears like a choir of angry cicadas. He had to do something, and fast. The rebel hover tank's main gun was glowing, building up to a lethal plasma discharge. It would reduce him and the princes to their constituent atoms in a heartbeat. Bruce's hand scrabbled in the dirt, his fingertips grazing the twisted smoking remnants of the friendly tank. A jagged shard of superheated hull plating seared his flesh, but he barely felt it. His fingers closed around it, skin blistering, as he reared back and hurled the chunk of metal at the hover tank, with every ounce of strength left in his battered body. The improvised projectile arced through the smoke-choked air, finding its mark in the tank's intake vent. A stroke of luck, or a testament to Bruce's battle-honed instincts. He'd exploited this same design flaw before, in a skirmish on Helios Prime. The tank's engines coughed and sputtered, choking on the debris. Bruce wasted no time. He grabbed Taldar and Zordal by their ornate collars and hauled them bodily towards a nearby outcropping of boulders, his muscles screaming with the effort. They made it to cover just as the hover tank's cannon fired, the superheated plasma beam sizzling through the space they'd occupied mere seconds before. The heat was intense, even behind the rocky shelter. The princes were shaking, their eyes wide with fear, but they weren't crying or screaming. Tough kids. Bruce gave them a quick once-over, checking for injuries. They seemed unhurt, physically at least. The emotional scars would take longer to heal. Peering around the edge of the boulder, Bruce assessed the situation. The hover tank was out of commission, belching black smoke, but a horde of rebel soldiers was advancing on their position, weapons at the ready. This was bad, really bad. Bruce's hand went to his belt, closing around his last plasma grenade. A plan formed in his mind, a desperate gambit, he locked eyes with the princes, his voice low and intense. Listen up, your highnesses. When I give the signal, I need you to run as fast as you can for that ridge over there. Don't stop for anything, understand? The boys nodded, their faces a mix of terror and grim determination. Bruce took a deep breath, praying this would work. He armed the grenade and lobbed it in a high arc towards the approaching rebels. As soon as it left his hand, he yelled, Go, go, go! and sprinted out from behind the boulders. Bruce ran in the opposite direction of the princes, firing his rifle one-handed, drawing the rebels' fire. The grenade detonated with a thunderous boom and a blinding flash, the shockwave sending rebel bodies flying like ragdolls. Plasma bolts filled the air, sizzling past Bruce as he zigzagged and weaved, never stopping his barrage of cover fire. His rifle grew hot in his hands, on the verge of overheating, but he kept squeezing the trigger. He had to buy the princes as much time as possible, had to lead the rebels away, had to complete the mission, no matter the cost. 
As Bruce danced with death, he could only hope that Taldar and Zordal would make it to safety, that his sacrifice wouldn't be in vain. Bruce's lungs burned as he sprinted across the war-torn landscape, his rifle spitting plasma at the pursuing rebels. The weapon grew hot in his hands, warning lights blinking as its power cell neared depletion. With a final defiant burst, the rifle clicked empty, its barrel smoking. Bruce ducked behind a shattered wall, his heart pounding. He reached for another power cell, but his hand grasped empty air. A cold realization settled in his gut. He was out of ammo. The rebels, emboldened by the sudden cessation of fire, advanced on his position, their weapons glowing with deadly intent. Bruce gritted his teeth, preparing for the end, but fate, it seemed, had other plans. A hatch on the ship's underside opened, disgorging a massive Vidian warrior clad in midnight armor. The newcomer hit the ground with a thud, his plasma cannon already spitting death. Entire squads of rebels were reduced to molten slag under the onslaught, their screams abruptly silenced. In moments the battlefield fell quiet, the stench of ozone and charred flesh hanging heavy in the air. Bruce emerged from behind the wall, approaching the Vidian with caution. I'm Bruce Phillips, Human Special Forces, he said, his voice rough from exertion. I have the princes, who the hell are you? The Vidian regarded him impassively, his features obscured by his helmet's visor. Captain Korvac of the Vidian Royal Guard, he rumbled. The king sent me to extract his sons, and you, human. Bruce blinked, stunned. A rescue from the king himself? It seemed too good to be true. I thank you, Captain, he managed. The princes are safe, hidden in the mountains nearby. We should... Korvac held up a hand, silencing him. The captain's head was cocked as if listening to a distant voice. When he spoke again, his tone was urgent. Change of plans, he growled. I'm receiving word of a rebel fleet massing in orbit. They're preparing to bombard the planet's surface. We need to evacuate immediately. My ship's sensors have located the prince's life signs. We'll retrieve them and get off-world before the bombardment begins. Korvac fixed Bruce with a stern look. Move, human, time is short. Without waiting for a response, the captain strode off towards the ridge where the princes were hidden, his cannon at the ready. Bruce, his mind reeling from the sudden turn of events, had no choice but to follow. As they raced against time, Bruce could only pray that they'd reach the princes before the rebel fleet turned the planet's surface to glass. The fate of the Empire hung in the balance, and failure was not an option. The ground beneath their feet began to tremble, a deep, ominous rumble that seemed to come from the very core of the planet. Bruce cast a worried glance skyward, half expecting to see the rebel ships descending like avenging angels. But the sky remained clear for now. Korvac quickened his pace, his strides eating up the distance. Bruce pushed himself to keep up, ignoring the burning in his muscles and the pounding of his heart. They crested a rise, and there, huddled in a small cave, were the princes. Relief flooded through Bruce at the sight of them, alive and unharmed, but there was no time for reunions. Korvac was already ushering the boys towards his waiting ship, his eyes scanning the horizon for threats. Bruce brought up the rear, his hand instinctively going to his empty rifle. He felt naked without a weapon, vulnerable in a way he hadn't felt in years, but he trusted Korvac, trusted in the Vidian's strength and skill. They were halfway to the ship when all hell broke loose. The sky above them split open, disgorging a swarm of rebel fighters. The sleek craft streaked towards the surface, their weapons already firing. The ground erupted around them, geysers of dirt and rock thrown skyward by the impact of plasma bolts. Korvac reacted instantly, his cannon roaring to life. The nearest fighter vanished in a ball of flame, but there were dozens more, an endless tide of death raining from the heavens. Bruce threw himself over the princes, shielding them with his body as the world around them descended into chaos. Explosions rocked the earth, the heat of the plasma searing his skin. He could hear the boys screaming, their voices high and thin with terror. Korvac was a one-man army, his cannon never ceasing its deadly barrage. Fighter after fighter fell to his onslaught, but it wasn't enough. There were too many coming too fast. 
A bolt struck the ground near them, the shockwave sending them tumbling. Bruce felt a searing pain in his side, felt the warm wetness of blood soaking his uniform. He struggled to his feet, dragging the princes with him. Ahead, Korvac's ship loomed like a promise of salvation. Its engines were already spooling up, the hatch open and waiting. Bruce summoned the last of his strength, half carrying, half dragging the princes towards safety. They were almost there when a rebel fighter swooped low, its cannons blazing. The bolts struck the ground in front of them, throwing up a wall of dirt and flame. Bruce felt himself falling, the princes torn from his grasp. He hit the ground hard, the breath driven from his lungs. Through the haze of pain and smoke he saw Korvac standing over him, the captain's armor scorched and pitted. The Vidian reached down, hauling Bruce to his feet with one massive hand. Together they staggered the last few meters to the ship, the princes clinging to them like limpets. They practically fell through the hatch, Korvac slamming it shut behind them. The ship leapt skyward, its engines screaming. Bruce lay on the deck, his vision swimming. He could feel the princes beside him, their small bodies shaking with sobs. As consciousness faded, Bruce's last thought was of the king, and the debt he could never repay. He had saved the princes, but at what cost? The empire was still at war, the rebel threat undiminished. But for now at least they were alive, and in a galaxy torn by conflict that was no small thing. Bruce Phillips and Captain Korvac sprinted up the rocky hillside, boots pounding on the rough terrain. Korvac's ship hovered overhead, turrets spitting streams of plasma at the rebel forces that swarmed like angry insects. The air crackled and sizzled with the heat of the barrage. Cresting the ridge, they spotted the princes huddled behind a massive boulder. Shaken but seemingly unharmed, Taldar's eyes widened as he caught sight of the Vidian captain. Captain Korvac, he called out, relief evident in his voice. Father sent you. Korvac gave a curt nod, his armored bulk looming over the twins. We must hurry, your highnesses. The rebels are preparing to... His words were drowned out by a deafening roar as a rebel fighter tore through the sky above them, plasma cannons strafing the ground in a deadly barrage. Bruce lunged forward, tackling the princes to the dirt as explosions erupted around them, showering them with debris. The fighter banked sharply, coming around for another pass. Korvac's cannon thundered in response, but the nimble craft evaded the blasts with ease. Get to the ship! Korvac roared over the chaos, his voice tinny through his helmet speakers. I'll hold them off! Bruce hesitated for a split second loath to leave the captain to face the onslaught alone. But the princes were his priority, his mission. He hauled Taldar and Zordal to their feet, half dragging, half carrying them, as he sprinted for the waiting ship. Plasma bolts sizzled past them, so close that Bruce could feel their searing heat through his armor. They were just meters from the open hatch when a rebel fighter swooped low, cannons blazing. Bruce shoved the princes forward with all his might, sending them tumbling into the safety of the ship's hold. At that same instant, a plasma bolt slammed into his back, burning through his armor and into his flesh. Agony erupted through his body, his legs giving out beneath him. He hit the ground hard, the breath driven from his lungs. Through a haze of pain, he saw the princes scrambling to their feet, terror etched on their young faces. Bruce! Zordal screamed, reaching out for him. But Bruce waved them back, his vision darkening at the edges. Go, he gasped, each word a struggle. Get out of here. The last thing he saw before the darkness claimed him was the ship's hatch sealing shut. The prince's anguished faces disappearing from view as the vessel lifted off, engines roaring as it clawed for the safety of space. Bruce slumped to the ground, a pained smile tugging at his lips. He had done his duty. The princes were safe. As consciousness fled, the sound of Korvac's cannon still echoed in his ears, the captain's defiant roar accompanying him into the waiting black. Give him hell, Captain, Bruce thought before the world faded away. Bruce's vision swam as he hauled himself to his feet, his scorched skin crackling as he moved. He could feel the eyes of the king and the guards on him, but he shut out their concern. Pain was an old friend, 
one he'd learned to ignore a long time ago. Oh, your Majesty, he grunted, I'm going to need a rifle, a big one. King Korvac nodded sharply, gesturing to one of the guards. Bring this man whatever he needs. Armor, weapons, medical supplies, spare no expense. As the guard hurried off, Bruce turned to Captain Korvac, taking in the Vidian's battered state. Looks like you've been through the ringer, Captain. Korvac let out a strained chuckle, wincing as the movement jostled his injuries. Nothing compared to what you've endured, human, but we've no time to lick our wounds. The rebels will be at our gates within the hour. Bruce nodded grimly, his mind already racing with strategies and tactics. He'd fought against worse odds, but never with stakes this high. The lives of the princes, the fate of an empire, it all rested on their ability to hold the line. The guard returned, staggering under the weight of a massive plasma rifle and a suit of gleaming black armor. Bruce took the weapon, feeling its heft, the thrum of power in its core. It was a work of art, deadly and beautiful. As he donned the armor, King Korvac stepped forward, his eyes burning with a fierce determination. I will not cower in my palace while my people fight and die, he declared. I may be a king, but I am a warrior first. I will stand with you, with all of you, and we will face this threat together. Bruce felt a surge of respect for the monarch. He'd met leaders who were content to sit back and let others bleed for them, but King Korvac was different. He was a man who led from the front, who shared the dangers and the sacrifices of his soldiers. Then let's get to it, Your Majesty, Bruce said, checking the charge on his rifle. We've got a war to win. Together, the human soldier, the Vidayan captain and the warrior king strode from the room, ready to face whatever the rebels threw at them. They were battered, bloodied, but unbroken, and they would fight to their last breath to defend what they held dear. As they emerged into the palace courtyard, the sound of distant explosions and screams reached their ears. The rebels were close, their ships darkening the sky like a swarm of angry locusts. Bruce could see the fear in the eyes of the palace guards, the way their hands shook on their weapons. But he also saw something else, a flicker of hope, a spark of defiance. These were warriors proud and brave, and they would not go down without a fight. Bruce raised his rifle, his voice ringing out across the courtyard. Listen up. The enemy thinks they've got us on the ropes. They think they can march in here and take what they want. But they're about to learn a hard lesson. You don't fuck with the Vidian Empire, and you sure as hell don't fuck with humanity. A roar went up from the assembled soldiers, a primal cry of rage and determination. They surged forward, forming up into defensive positions, their weapons at the ready. Bruce took his place at the front, shoulder to shoulder with King Korvac and Captain Korvac. He could feel the heat of the plasma rifle in his hands, the weight of the armor on his shoulders. This was what he was made for, what he'd trained for all his life. The chaos of battle, the rush of adrenaline, the knowledge that every second could be his last. He looked to the sky, watching as the rebel ships grew larger, their cannons glowing with deadly intent. They were in for the fight of their lives, but Bruce wouldn't have it any other way. Come on, you bastards, he growled, his finger tightening on the trigger. Come and get some. Bruce's scorched skin crackled and protested as he donned the sleek Vidian combat armor, but he shut out the pain, his focus absolute. The advanced suit encased him like a second skin, its heads-up display flickering to life before his eyes. In his hands, a high-powered plasma rifle hummed with barely contained energy, its weight reassuring. He emerged into the palace courtyard to find a scene of utter chaos. King Korvac stood at the center of a maelstrom of violence, his massive plasma sword carving through rebel soldiers with each sweeping arc. Captain Korvac, a one-man army, rained destruction upon the enemy with his cannon, each blast leaving behind smoldering craters and charred corpses. Bruce charged into the fray, joining the Vidian elites as they clashed with the rebel horde. His rifle bucked against his shoulder as he fired, the superheated plasma bolts punching through enemy armor like it was paper. All around him, the courtyard had become a killing ground. The air sizzled with the crisscrossing of plasma beams, the stones beneath his feet grew slick with blood and gore. 
the rebels pressed forward with fanatical zeal, heedless of their mounting losses, their battle cries mixing with the screams of the dying. Bruce's world narrowed to the rifle in his hands and the enemies before him. Pain became a distant thing, drowned out by the surge of adrenaline and the primal need to survive. He cut down rebel after rebel, his weapon growing hot in his grip as it spat death. For a moment, it seemed they might turn the tide. King Korvac was a force of nature, his plasma sword leaving a trail of sundered bodies. Captain Korvac's cannon never ceased its thunderous barrage, each shot finding its mark with unerring precision. The palace defenders fought with skill and courage, giving ground only grudgingly. But the rebels were too many. For every one that fell, two more surged forward to take their place, trampling over the bodies of their fallen comrades. Bruce felt the cold fingers of despair grip his heart as he realized the bitter truth. They were being overwhelmed. It was only a matter of time before the palace fell. Just as hope began to flicker and die, a new sound split the air. The roar of engines. Bruce's head snapped up to see a squadron of human fighters screaming overhead, their plasma cannons spitting blue-white death. The rebel ranks shuddered under the onslaught, soldiers scattering like ants beneath a magnifying glass. A cheer went up from the beleaguered palace defenders as the human ships strafed the rebel positions, their formation crumbling under the devastating barrage. The rebels, caught utterly off guard by this unexpected ally, fell into disarray, their advance faltering. The roar grew louder, and a massive human dropship descended into the courtyard like an avenging angel, its hatches yawning open to disgorge a fully armed company of human soldiers. At their head, a familiar figure, Admiral Nora Vance, Bruce's commanding officer. Looks like you could use a hand, Sergeant Phillips, she called out, her rifle already barking as she cut down a charging rebel. Sorry we're late. Had to make a little detour to pick up some friends. She gestured to the dropship, where King Korvac's royal guard, led by a visibly relieved Captain Korvac, were disembarking to join the battle. Fresh troops, Vidayan and human alike, poured into the fray, their weapons adding to the cacophony. Bruce felt a grin split his face, a wild, fierce thing. Your timing is impeccable as always, Admiral, he shouted back, raising his rifle in salute. Now, what do you say we kick these rebel bastards off this planet once and for all? Admiral Vance's smile was predatory, her eyes glinting with the promise of violence. I thought you'd never ask, Sergeant. All units, advance. A roar went up from the combined human and Vidian forces, a primal, defiant thing. As one, they surged forward, Bruce and King Korvac at their head, weapons blazing. The rebels already reeling from the sudden turn of events, broke before the onslaught, their lines shattering like glass. Bruce lost himself in the rhythm of battle, his rifle an extension of his will. Beside him King Korvac was a whirlwind of plasma-wreathed death, his sword leaving a trail of sundered bodies in his wake. Admiral Vance and her soldiers hit the rebels like a hammer, their discipline and firepower turning the tide with ruthless efficiency. The battle raged on, neither side giving quarter, but with each passing minute the balance shifted. The rebels, once so certain of victory, now fought with the desperate fury of cornered animals. The palace defenders, bolstered by their newfound allies, pressed the advantage, determined to drive the invaders from their world. Plasma bolts lit the courtyard in a hellish light, the air thick with the stench of ozone and burned flesh. Screams and battle cries mingled with the unending thunder of weapons fire, a symphony of violence that seemed to stretch on for an eternity. But even the rebels' fanatical zeal could not stand against the combined might of the Vidian and human forces. Slowly, inexorably, they were pushed back, their numbers dwindling with each passing moment. The palace gates, once on the verge of being breached, now stood as an impenetrable bulwark, a symbol of defiance against the rebel onslaught. Bruce found himself at the forefront of the advance, King Korvac and Admiral Vance at his side. Together they were an unstoppable force, carving a path through the enemy ranks like a plasma torch through steel. The rebels fell before them, their weapons and armor no match for the trio's skill and determination. With a final desperate push, the rebels broke, 
their formation shattering like glass under a hammer blow. They fled, a disorganized rout, their courage shattered in the face of the Vidian and human counterattack. Bruce stood amidst the carnage, his chest heaving, his armor scorched and battered. Around him, the palace defenders let out a ragged cheer, their voices hoarse from the long hours of fighting. King Korvac, his sword still glowing with heat, clasped Bruce's shoulder, his eyes alight with gratitude and respect. "'You fought like a true warrior today, Sergeant Phillips,' the monarch said, his voice heavy with emotion. "'The Vidian people owe you a debt we can never repay.' Admiral Vance, her own armor bearing the scars of battle, nodded in agreement. "'Damn fine work, Bruce. I knew I could count on you.' Bruce, exhausted but elated, could only nod his throat too raw for words. They had done it. Against all odds, they had turned the tide and saved the palace from the rebel onslaught. But even as they savoured their hard-won victory, Bruce knew that the war was far from over. The rebels, though beaten today, would not give up so easily. They would regroup, lick their wounds and come again, determined to topple the Vidian monarchy and plunge the empire into chaos. But for now, in this moment, none of that mattered. They had won the day, and that was enough. Bruce looked to King Korvac and Admiral Vance, saw the determination in their eyes, and knew that whatever challenges lay ahead, they would face them together. Vidian and Human, united against a common foe. It was a new chapter in the history of both their peoples, a chance for a brighter future forged in the crucible of war. Bruce hefted his rifle ready to face whatever came next. The battle for the palace was over, but the fight for the Vidian Empire, for the fate of an entire quadrant, had only just begun. The combined might of the human and Vidian forces surged forward, plasma rifles and cannons spitting death as they drove the rebel scum back from the palace grounds. Bruce and Admiral Vance fought side by side, their weapons flashing as they cut down enemy soldiers with ruthless efficiency. Captain Korvac was a one-man army, his massive cannon vaporizing entire squads of rebels with each devastating blast. But just as victory seemed within reach, a massive explosion rocked the city, the shockwave nearly knocking Bruce off his feet. He whirled around to see a towering plume of smoke and debris rising from the central district, the roar of the blast echoing through the streets. Bruce's heart sank as he realized the implications. With the power out, the palace's defenses would be crippled, leaving them vulnerable to attack. As if on cue, a frantic shout rang out from the palace gates. Intruders in the royal chambers. They're going after the king and princes. Bruce and Captain Korvac exchanged a grim look, understanding passing between them in an instant. They charged towards the palace, Admiral Vance and her troops close behind. The once grand halls of the palace had become a war zone, rebel soldiers pouring in from a hidden tunnel, their weapons blazing. Bruce and his allies met them head on, the confined space erupting into a brutal melee. A hulking rebel commander lunged at Bruce, a crackling plasma blade in his clawed grip. The alien's eyes burned with hatred as he swung the weapon in a vicious arc. Bruce parried the blow with his rifle, the two weapons clashing in a blinding flash of energy. The rebel pressed the attack, his blade a blur of light as he rained down, blow after blow. Despite the searing pain from his injuries, Bruce held his ground, his rifle bucking in his hands as he poured plasma fire into the rebel's armor at point-blank range. The alien's armor began to glow, then melt under the onslaught, but still he kept coming. With a roar of defiance, Bruce surged forward, driving the white-hot barrel of his rifle through the rebel's faceplate. The alien's scream was abruptly cut off as the plasma beam vaporized his skull, his lifeless body crumpling to the floor. Bruce spun around, searching for his next target, and froze at the sight before him. King Korvac was locked in combat with another rebel officer, the monarch's plasma sword flashing as he fended off a flurry of attacks. Bruce raised his rifle to assist, but before he could fire, a searing bolt of plasma lanced out from the shadows, catching King Korvac square in the chest. The king staggered, his sword falling from his grip as he collapsed to the ground. No! Captain Korvac's anguished cry echoed through the chamber, 
as he charged towards the hidden sniper, his cannon roaring. The rebel assassin barely had time to scream before he was reduced to a smoldering crater, the force of the blast shaking dust from the ceiling. Bruce raced to the fallen king's side, dropping to his knees beside the monarch. He cradled King Korvac's head, his heart sinking as he saw the extent of the wound. The plasma bolt had punched clean through the king's armor, burning a hole in his chest. Dark purple blood pooled beneath him, spreading across the polished floor. Bruce felt hot tears stinging his eyes as the king's body went limp, his final breath escaping in a shuddering sigh. He gently lowered the monarch to the ground, his hand lingering on the king's still chest. I will, your majesty. Bruce choked out his voice thick with grief and rage. I swear it on my life. He rose to his feet, meeting Captain Korvac's gaze. The captain's eyes were hard, his jaw clenched tight. In that moment, an unspoken vow passed between them, a promise to avenge their fallen king and protect his legacy. For King Korvac, the captain growled, his cannon humming with barely restrained power. For King Korvac, Bruce echoed, raising his rifle, and for the Vidian Empire. Side by side, they charged back into the fray, their weapons spitting plasma as they fought to reach the princes, before the rebels could claim more innocent lives. The battle was far from over, but Bruce knew one thing with grim certainty. He would not rest until the king's murderers were brought to justice, no matter the cost. With the Warmex smoldering wreckage at their backs, Bruce, Captain Korvac, and the battered but unbroken Vidian warriors forged ahead, the princes secured in their midst. The once opulent corridors of the palace lay in ruins, the air choked with smoke and the coppery tang of blood. Rounding a corner, they found their path blocked by a phalanx of rebel soldiers, a scarred, battle-hardened commander at their head. The rebels leveled their weapons, fingers tightening on triggers, but before they could unleash a barrage of plasma, a volley of searing bolts tore through their ranks from behind. Admiral Vance and her human soldiers surged forward, their faces grim and their weapons smoking. They had fought their way through the rebel lines, leaving a trail of broken bodies in their wake. The rebel commander, seeing his troops cut down and his odds of victory dwindling with each passing second, made a desperate gambit. He lunged forward, seizing Prince Taldar in a brutal grip and pressing the searing muzzle of a plasma pistol to the young Vidian's temple. Drop your weapons, the rebel snarled, spittle flying from his lips, his eyes wild and fevered. Or the prince's brains paint the walls. Bruce and the others froze, weapons trained on the rebel but unwilling to risk the prince's life. The standoff stretched on, the air crackling with tension, the only sounds the ragged breathing of the combatants and the distant roar of battle. Suddenly Prince Zordal moved, a blur of speed and deadly purpose. His hand darted into his robes and emerged clutching an elegantly crafted plasma dagger, its blade humming with restrained power. In one fluid motion, he buried the dagger to the hilt in the rebel commander's eye socket. The commander screamed, a high agonized wail that echoed off the crumbling walls. His grip on Taldar slackened as he clawed at his ruined face, blood pouring between his fingers. Taldar seized his chance. He tore free of the rebel's grasp, spinning and lashing out with a vicious kick that caught the commander's knee with a sickening crunch. The joint shattered under the blow, and the rebel collapsed, howling his pain and rage. Bruce and the others opened fire, their weapons roaring in unison. The rebel soldiers, their commander fallen and their fate sealed, were cut down in a storm of plasma, their bodies jerking and dancing under the onslaught before crumpling to the floor, wisps of smoke curling from their charred armor. Taldar and Zordal nodded, their faces pale but their eyes alight with a fierce, unyielding determination. We are unharmed, Sergeant Phillips, Taldar said, his voice steady despite the horrors he had witnessed. Thanks to you and your allies. Zordal's gaze shifted to the fallen rebel commander, his expression hardening. Our father, he began, his voice catching in his throat. The princes clasped hands their knuckles white with the strength of their grip, their faces etched with a resolve far beyond their tender years. Then we shall honor his sacrifice, Taldar declared, his voice ringing with the authority of a born leader. 
We shall end this rebellion and restore peace to our people, no matter the cost. Bruce rose to his feet, towering over the princes, a pillar of strength and unwavering loyalty. And we shall stand with you, your highnesses, he vowed, his words a solemn oath. You have my word, and the word of all humanity. We fight beside you, now and always. Admiral Vance stepped forward, her hand coming to rest on Bruce's shoulder, her grip firm and reassuring. Sergeant Phillips speaks for us all, she affirmed, her voice rich with conviction. The might of the human fleet is yours to command, Princes Taldar and Zordal. Together we will crush these rebels and secure a bright future for the Vidian Empire. The princes nodded, gratitude and determination burning bright in their eyes. Then let us tarry no longer, Zordal urged, striding towards the waiting ships with purpose in his steps. We have a war to win and a people to save. As the group boarded the vessels, the engines roaring to life, Bruce cast one final glance at the battle-scarred palace, his heart heavy with the weight of loss but buoyed by an unbreakable resolve. The war was far from over, the challenges ahead daunting, but with the princes safe and the strength of humanity at their side, he knew that victory, though hard fought, was within their grasp. The fate of the Vidian Empire, the destiny of an entire galaxy, now rested upon their shoulders, and Sergeant Bruce Phillips would not rest until that future was secured, no matter the trials that lay ahead. Plasma bolts seared the air as the combined forces of the Vidian Human Alliance descended upon the rebel stronghold on the moon's cratered surface. Dropships disgorged squads of battle-hardened soldiers, their armor glinting in the harsh light of the star-strewn void. At their head, Bruce and Captain Korvac charged forward, plasma rifles spitting blue-white death. The rebel forces, entrenched behind hastily erected barricades and jury-rigged fortifications, met the Alliance's advance with a hail of return fire. The air crackled with the crisscrossing of energy beams, the ground trembling under the concussive blasts of plasma grenades. Bruce ducked behind a shattered outcropping of rock, Captain Korvac diving in beside him. The Vidian's face was grim, his eyes hard as flint. They're dug in deep, he growled, popping up to snap off a burst of fire that sent a group of rebels scattering. This won't be easy. Bruce nodded, jaw clenched. It never is, but we've come too far to turn back now. They surged forward once more, their weapons roaring as they advanced into the teeth of the rebel defences. All around them, Alliance soldiers fell, their armour smoking and rent. But for every one that fell, two more took their place, pressing the attack with grim determination. In the chaos of the battle, Bruce and Captain Korvac found themselves cut off from the main force, surrounded by a seething horde of rebel soldiers. They fought back to back, their rifles growing hot in their hands as they poured fire into the encircling enemy. But the numbers were against them. For every rebel they cut down, three more seemed to take their place. Bruce's rifle clicked empty, and he reached for a fresh power cell, only to find his belt empty. Beside him, Captain Korvac's cannon whined, its barrel glowing cherry red with the heat of sustained fire. Just as despair began to set in, a shadow fell across the battlefield. Bruce looked up to see a rebel fighter swooping low, its plasma cannons spitting death. But instead of targeting the Alliance forces, it raked the rebel lines with devastating precision. The fighter's cockpit canopy popped open, revealing the determined faces of Prince Taldar and Prince Zordal. The young Vidians had commandeered the fighter, turning the rebels' own weapons against them. Renewed hope surged through Bruce's veins. He snatched up a fallen rebel's rifle and rallied the nearby Alliance soldiers. Forward, he roared, his voice cutting through the din of battle. For the Alliance, for the Vidian Empire! With the princes providing air support, the tide of the battle began to turn. Bruce and Captain Korvac led a final, desperate charge towards the heart of the Rebel Command Center, a massive bunker of reinforced Dura steel. They breached the bunker's fortified doors with a volley of plasma grenades storming into the smoke-filled chamber beyond. There, they found themselves face to face with the Rebel leader, a grizzled Vidayan warlord with hate-filled eyes and a snarl on his lips. 
The warlord lunged at Bruce, a crackling plasma blade in his fist. Bruce met the charge head-on, his rifle abandoned in favor of his own humming plasma dagger. They clashed in a flurry of blows, the air sizzling with the heat of their weapons. The warlord was driven by a lifetime of hatred and resentment, his every strike fueled by a savage rage. But Bruce's training and unwavering resolve proved the stronger. With a final, devastating blow, he buried his dagger in the warlord's chest, the plasma blade searing through flesh and bone. As the warlord crumpled, the last of the rebel resistance broke. Alliance soldiers flooded into the command center, securing the chamber and rounding up the surviving rebels. But the victory was tempered by a sudden anguished cry. Bruce spun to see Captain Korvac slumping to the ground, a smoking hole in his chest. A rebel sniper, hidden in the rafters, had gotten off one final spiteful shot. Bruce nodded, his vision blurring with unshed tears. I promise, Captain, your sacrifice, it won't be in vain. The Vidayan Empire will rise again, stronger than ever. In the aftermath of the battle, as the smoke cleared and the wounded were tended to, Bruce stood before the princes, Admiral Vance at his side. The weight of the fallen hung heavy on his shoulders, the price of victory paid in blood and sorrow. Your Highnesses, he said, his voice rough with emotion, the rebellion is broken, but the cost has been high. Your father, Captain Korvac, they gave their lives for the future of your people. Taldar and Zordal, their young faces etched with grief, bowed their heads in solemn acknowledgement. But when they looked up, their eyes burned with a fierce determination. Their sacrifice will not be forgotten, Taldar declared, his voice ringing with the authority of a true leader. We will rebuild, and we will forge a new era of peace and prosperity for the Vidian Empire. Zordal turned to Bruce and Admiral Vance, gratitude and respect shining in his gaze, and we will do so with the help of our human allies, the bonds forged in the heat of battle will not be easily broken. Bruce clasped the prince's shoulder, a bittersweet smile tugging at his lips. No, they won't. Humanity stands with you, now and always. But the road ahead will not be easy. There will be challenges, obstacles, and more sacrifice. The galaxy is a harsh and unforgiving place. Taldar met Bruce's gaze unflinchingly, his resolve unwavering. We understand, Sergeant Phillips, but with your guidance and the strength of our alliance, we will face whatever comes, for the future of the Vidayan Empire, and for the memory of those we've lost. As the ships of the Vidian Human Alliance lifted off from the moon's battle-scarred surface, carrying the wounded and the fallen, Bruce stood at the viewport, his eyes fixed on the stars beyond. The war was won, but the battles ahead, both political and personal, would be no less daunting. But in this moment, as the weight of victory and loss settled on his shoulders, Bruce allowed himself a small measure of hope. Hope for a future where the sacrifices of King Korvac, Captain Korvac, and so many others would not be in vain. A future where Vidayans and humans stood together, united against the darkness of a cold and unforgiving universe. A future worth fighting for, and a future he knew he would give everything to protect. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.